Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a gaming monitor from AOC. This is their G2590FX. It's a low-cost 24.5-inch monitor, 1080p. It goes up to 144 hertz. And a bunch of you wrote in to me asking me to review this one because it supports both AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync. These are technologies that smooth out the display so you don't get screen tearing as the frame rate fluctuates in your games. And it seems to be doing a pretty nice job of that. So we're going to be taking a closer look at this monitor here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this monitor is all about. Now the price point on this one is $189. You shouldn't pay more than that. I'm seeing some third-party sellers trying to take advantage of the current supply constraints and selling it for more. So be patient and you'll find it for a lower price tag. Again, 24.5 inches, it's 1080p, 144 hertz, one millisecond response rate on it. The panel is a TN panel, uh, which is a little less sharp and crispy uh, versus the IPS panels we typically see on laptops and on uh, tablets and that sort of thing. But I have to say the image quality for a TN display, and I've seen a lot of them over the years, is among the best I've seen. It does look a little bit washed out, but the contrast is much better depending on the viewing angle that you're at. Uh, so if you're dead center on it, it looks great. Uh, but just know that as you go off center, you'll start to see the image degrade. So that's one of the things you really gotta focus on here is the best spot, the sweet spot, where you can really get to the middle of that display. Uh, but once you get it dialed in, it looks great. One thing I noticed is that when it first came up, my computer was defaulting to 60 hertz. So you need to get into your uh, Windows control panel and turn it up to 144, which is the max refresh rate it supports because initially the image didn't look great at all. And once I switched it into 144, it suddenly looked a lot better. Uh, we're gonna hook up my Mister, which is a 1080p 60 only device in a little bit, and we'll see how it looks on there. But on the Windows side, uh, you really wanna get this dialed up to the max refresh rate out of the gate. Now there are four inputs on the back of the monitor. You have two HDMI ports, a display port, and a VGA. I would suggest using DisplayPort, especially if you have an NVIDIA card, because that is what will ensure that you'll get the G-Sync to work properly. FreeSync will work over both HDMI and DisplayPort, and the FreeSync range is 30 to 144 hertz on this display. Now, one thing I had to do right out of the gate was pull up the on-screen control panel here and go over to the game settings because by default, the monitor is not in game mode, even though it is a gaming monitor. And when it's not in game mode, your input lag is not going to be the best setting. So what I would suggest you do immediately is go into that control panel. There's a little button in the back that you push. Uh, go in there and uh, set it to one of the gaming modes that looks best. You can get some defaults here, and then after you get it to the default setting, you can go in and change some of the color and get things to where you want it to be. Uh, there's not a lot of controls on this one insofar as calibration is concerned. This is not a pro level monitor. It's certainly not priced that way. So you've got your gamma, your brightness, and your contrast. Uh, you have some color settings that you can make adjustments to, but again, nothing spectacular in the way of fine tuning. But I think you'll find a mode that works best. And again, I was pretty pleased with uh, the image quality, even just running on uh, this gaming setup to begin with. Uh, input lag when you do have it in gaming mode is very good. Uh, it's as good as any other gaming monitor I have tested. What we do is we hook up a, a game controller, an Xbox One controller to a gaming PC via USB. Uh, we shoot the screen at 240 frames per second and see how long it takes for a button push to register on screen. Uh, we got about 44 milliseconds on this monitor, which is as good as all of the other higher-end gaming monitors I have tested over the years. So I think from an input lag standpoint, it works as well as other more expensive gaming monitors do. Now the stand that it comes with for the lowest price version is pretty limited in its adjustability. So you can of course move it around if you actually move the stand itself. Uh, you can adjust the screen angle just slightly here, but it doesn't move up or down. It looks like they offer a slightly more expensive version that does have some up and down movement to the stand. 
and it's Visa compatible, so you could just buy a Visa mount and get your own stand if you don't like what it came with here. It's pretty stable, but it does get a little wobbly if you uh, nudge the monitor here a little bit, but I found if I shake the desk, it does hold itself uh, pretty steady there. So for a default stand, not bad at all. Uh, you can take a look here at the back of the monitor. Uh, not much here beyond the inputs that go in underneath. You got the control button over here. The power supply is built in, so there's no power brick that goes along with this, which is nice. You have a Kensington lock here, and there's a headphone jack back there as well, but there are no internal speakers, even though it looks like it has them with these little speaker grills here. Now, one of the cool things about this display is that it supports NVIDIA G-Sync. That's typically something that in the recent past would cost a lot more money to get out of a gaming display. Uh, here you've got it, provided you're plugged into an NVIDIA graphics card with a DisplayPort cable. Uh, when you do have that connection made, you'll see the option here in the NVIDIA control panel to enable G-Sync. And what this will do is when you are in a game with a varying frame rate, it will sync the display up with the graphics card so they run at uh, the same frequencies here. And you don't get the screen tearing that you'll get when the display's refresh rate is out of sync with what frames are being generated by the graphics card. And it's been working great. I haven't seen any real issues with screen tearing on the games that I've been playing on it. Uh, this is No Man's Sky, which is notorious for a frame rate that varies a lot given it's all procedurally generated. Uh, it looks fantastic here, and I've had no problems at all. I also a little bit earlier tested it out with an AMD graphics card with their FreeSync technology, which is a similar uh, means of getting these displays and graphics cards to talk with each other. No screen tearing there either. Uh, to better demonstrate what this does, I ran the NVIDIA Pendulum test a little bit earlier with my slow motion camera, and you can see how when you have G-Sync off, you get, get a lot of screen tearing as that line is moving across the screen but when you enable it, it smooths right out, and that is the experience that I've been seeing in all of the games that I've been running on this display. Really good stuff and something that is really nice to see at this affordable price point. Uh, there are still, though, displays that have more G-Sync features. They have custom hardware on board that this lacks, uh, so this really does the basic G-Sync functionality of eliminating screen tearing under the right conditions. Uh, but you won't get some of the other visual things that you can gain uh, from some of the dedicated G-Sync hardware that's in more expensive displays. But for the price point, this is great. And I also wanted to get a look at the response rate of the panel. They say it's one millisecond, and the best way to get a good feel for response rate is to load up an old 8-bit game like this one. This is Castlevania 3 uh, running on my Mr. FPGA console here, and it looks pretty good. We're not seeing a lot of blur here in the background. Uh, slower displays really look bad, especially with this game. Uh, there still is a little bit of blurriness that's hard to avoid on an LCD display versus a CRT that this was designed to run on, but overall I'm very pleased with how nice it is running here and how quickly uh, this display is able to update the pixels to prevent a lot of blurring as you've got a lot of fast motion going on here. Uh, that's something that TN displays do quite well. So although you don't get that crispiness that you see out of an IPS display, uh, these can update themselves quicker and often look better uh, for games like this. So overall, I'm very pleased with this display. It looks great for a TN display, which really surprised me. In fact, it actually looks better in person than what you're seeing on screen. It's often hard to get these displays to match up with what I'm seeing when you're just shooting the screen with a camera. So the contrast is good. Uh, the viewing angles aren't spectacular, but better than many TN displays I've looked at. And overall, I've just been very pleased with what they've put together here for the price point. So if you're uh, looking for a 1080p display for a game console or your computer, uh, this is definitely something to take a look at. Seems to work great. It's nice and fast, and I think it's very well suited for gaming. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.